This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. Today is Friday, September 9th. Well, a homeowner was awakened by a loud crashing sound early this morning when a vehicle smashed into her yard and home here in town. News 25 caught up with her this morning to find out more. Early this morning, just after 12.30, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue were dispatched to the area of Comstock Street and Upland for a report of a vehicle versus structure crash. Upon arrival, they found a vehicle that was attempting to flee the scene of this crash. The residents inside the home said that the car went through their yard, hit the side of the building, and then went through the front of the property, attempting to flee in a desert area on the other side of Comstock Street. The homeowner made contact with the driver who has been identified as Eric Pedro Rosales. Rosales was seen earlier in the area, according to the homeowner, and was driving erratically at that time. Nye County Sheriff's deputies arrived on scene and were able to take Rosales into custody. He is facing charges of DUI alcohol or drugs and a traffic offense, as well as possible other charges related to this crash. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Fire Chief Scott Lewis said that he will be inspecting the building today to see if, in fact, this is habitable at this time. No injuries have been reported. Well, one person was transported from a two-vehicle crash that occurred this afternoon. That was on U.S. Highway 95 at mile marker 39. Mercy Air, Nevada Highway Patrol, Knight County Sheriff's Office deputies, and Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue arrived on scene. Mercy Air transported one person to a trauma center in Las Vegas. Traffic was diverted around that crash, and Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating. Well, Prince Charles is now King Charles III. Britain's King Charles today spoke about his mother, Queen Elizabeth, and her passing at the age of 96. The king bestowed on his eldest son, William, and daughter-in-law, Kate, the titles of Prince and Princess of Wales, which he and his late wife, Diana, previously held. I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow. Throughout her life, Her Majesty the Queen, my beloved mother, was an inspiration, an example to me and to all my family. And we owe her the most heartfelt debt any family could owe to their mother for her love, affection, guidance, understanding, and example. Queen Elizabeth was a life well lived, a promise with destiny kept and she is mourned most deeply in her passing. That promise of lifelong service I renew to you all today. Alongside the personal grief that all my family are feeling, we also share with so many of you in the United Kingdom, in all the countries where the Queen was head of state, in the Commonwealth and across the world, a deep sense of gratitude for the more than 70 years in which my mother, as Queen, served the people of so many nations. In 1947, on her 21st birthday, she pledged in a broadcast from Cape Town to the Commonwealth to devote her life, whether it be short or long, to the service of her peoples. That was more than a promise. It was a profound personal commitment which defined her whole life. She made sacrifices for duty. Her dedication and devotion as sovereign never wavered through times of change and progress, through times of joy and celebration, and through times of sadness and loss. 
In her life of service, we saw that abiding love of tradition, together with that fearless embrace of progress, which makes us great as nations. The affection, admiration, and respect she inspired became the hallmark of her reign. You know, I do want to recognize our own England transplant here, and that is Romano Fordini, who is back there tech directing. I know that this hit home for him. Rotarian Phyllis Howe spoke to News 25 about his special event that they're holding this Sunday that honors first responders who served at 9-11, 2001, and those who serve every day. We've been doing this for, um, I want to say, about nine years now. And it's a very special, very moving event. Um, we start at 8.30. We have local speakers who come and share their stories with us. Uh, what we do is we follow the timeline of the original 9-11. And so the ceremony actually be begins at 8.30 on the dot, and it lasts approximately two hours. Um, we have coffee and donuts available. So you might want to get there a little bit early to get your coffee and donuts so you can take your seat. It's a, it's a very special event. Uh, we have people who tell us they are so moved by it because it brings the whole thing back. And, um, and so we're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, this was actually the dream child of uh, Roy Mankins, who was president at that time. and. Uh, it went step by step, took it to an architect, got all the plans drawn out. Uh, the Rotarians did a lot of the work, and then we had other people who volunteered their time and their, their knowledge and, and uh, supplies to help us out. And it's a beautiful re reflection area. There are benches, and it's very quiet there. You can go there, and, and uh, maybe you're walking around that area or walking your dog. You can sit down on the benches and just have quiet time. It's really very nice. And it honors our first responders. Right? It does, absolutely. We have a special board for our Nye County Sheriffs, uh, the years that they served and the years uh, that they passed away, if that's the case. Um, and of course, we honor our local uh, fire department and emergency services and the sheriff's department, obviously. We will, the sheriff's department supplies the honor guard, mm -hmm. Uh, which is, to me, that's a very special part of the program. Um, and then Scott Lewis brings the fire truck, and they raise the boom, and they have this huge flag hanging down. Um, it's just, it, it gives me chills even to talk about it. That truck represents everything that happened on that day, 20, what, 21 years ago. We have Greg Hafen. Um, now, I'm going to have to think about it. It's been a while since I've made up the... Uh, uh, the program. But we have local dignitaries primarily. We have a local um, minister who's coming and he will be doing the invocation. Um, our current president and also Roy Menkins, whose brainchild this was, will also give a short talk. I will be emceeing the program. Um, and I think if you haven't been there, I think you'll find it very moving and informative too. Rotary has an official bell. It has a very beautiful tone to it. And so at the time of each attack, we announce what happened, uh, talk about the dead, and uh, we ring the gong, and we have a moment of silence for each one. And we have more news and another event happening on the National Day of Service. We'll tell you about that right after this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Nye Communities Coalition and several local churches here in Pahrump are hosting a food and clothing drive this Sunday on 9-11. Yeah, that's coming up on 9-11 and uh, Nye Communities Coalition as well as um, several of the churches in the val valley are actually doing a food and clothing drive, uh, gently used clothing drive for children and food for people that are in need. Uh, there's several locations. Um, the Methodist Church, 
uh, New Hope Fellowship Church, um, Faith Fellowship, and uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Things like uh, dried spaghetti and canned foods, um, you know, uh, little box dinners, uh, things that normally would be fairly non-perishable, but no food items will be turned away. It starts now through 9-11. So through in the entire 9-11, you would be able to drop items off if there is somebody at that location. Nevada Outreach, Nye Communities Coalition has a great um, committee that works with you know, people that are in need of food and the food pantries. And the Church of Jesus Christ um, continues to work with the food pantries. We've been um, donating food from the Bishop's Storehouse for some time now with the community church. Now we're going to be doing it with New Hope Fellowship as well to support them. So things, things are, you know, we're hoping to come together as a community and you know, it takes a village to help a village. Well, a report released Wednesday by Las Vegas Realtors shows local home prices declining for the third straight month with fewer homes selling and more available for sale. LVR reported that the median price of existing single family homes sold in Southern Nevada through its multiple listing service during August was $450,000 and that's down from the all time record price of $482,000 in May and down 3.2% from July. Today's Medical Minute advice for improving your health. We're going to go to Spring Mountain Medical right now. This Medical Minute is brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical. Healthcare the way you've always imagined it. Hi, I'm Ted with Spring Mountain Medical, your hometown health and wellness provider. Today I want to talk about taking the next step in achieving improved health. Do you feel stuck with your weight, physical fitness, or general energy levels and activity? Do you feel discouraged by the pace of your physical improvement? If so, don't despair. Our bodies all go through stages and levels of highs and lows and stagnation periods because of what we eat, stress, injury, or limitations to mobility due to illness and more. These cycles are normal and shouldn't be a reason to lose hope for our goals. Sometimes all it takes is starting a plan of action that resets our bodies and minds and puts us on a new track. Our providers can provide advanced diagnostic testing and examinations that will restore your activity plan that will get you on the right track. Make an appointment with us today to help you feel your best. I'm Ted, and this has been your Medical Minute brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical. All right, and your health report on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. I know you've heard this before. This cold and flu season is expected to be a doozy. Not only will COVID be a concern, but cold and flu are expected to make a comeback. We're concerned about all respiratory viruses this year. And because influenza will likely be more common than it was in the past, and because we anticipate that COVID activity will pick up this fall as people recongregate in schools and so on, um, I think it's highly likely that there will be individuals who have both influenza and COVID or COVID and some other uh, vi viral respiratory illness. Dr. Susan Rehm is an infectious disease specialist with Cleveland Clinic. She says sorting out what's making someone sick will be challenging because COVID, the flu, and other respiratory illnesses have overlapping symptoms. The good news is that testing has evolved and doctors can test for a variety of viruses to see what someone has. She adds, it's important to know what's causing symptoms because you may be eligible for treatments designed to lessen the illness, like antiviral medications for COVID and flu. Particularly for people who have underlying medical problems, it's important to contact your physician right away when you notice symptoms because there may be testing and treatment available.
Well, Dr. Reem says prevention is always better than treatment and vaccines are your best defense. She encourages everyone aged six months or older to get vaccinated against the flu and COVID-19. Junk programs on your computer are a concern. We're gonna meet with Josh Osborne, who's gonna give us some tips. Hey guys, Josh Osborne here with FromZone Great Computer Deals. It's time for another quick tutorial. Today's topic, the most common issues we see at our computer repair center and how to avoid them, part three. You think the biggest technology issue facing our customers in this day and age would be their lack of computer knowledge. That's actually not the case at all. You'd be surprised to find that 50% of the problems that we help people solve are completely avoidable regardless of a customer's computer literacy. Today's issue, too many junk programs. When you buy a new computer in the store these days, you're already at a huge disadvantage because they pre-install what we like to call bloatware. These are software programs that are not malicious in nature, but offer nothing to the customer and are usually just an attempt to make more money off of it. Examples of these programs are trial versions of security software like McAfee, like Norton, and other utilities that offer little value and are simply just constant reminders to purchase more products from a specific manufacturer. And don't get me wrong, a big reason for computers having too many junk programs is also the fault of the computer owner themselves. Browser toolbars, buggy screensavers, antivirus software that uses up all of your resources, and various other junk applications will cause your computer to run slow. We recommend folks stay away from downloading and installing these worthless programs. Stick to name brand software from companies like Microsoft, Adobe, etc. So how do we avoid these problems? Well, it's really hard to buy a computer without some form of bloatware already pre-installed. At our computer store, we pride ourselves on offering machines with a clean install of Windows. If you buy yours elsewhere, you can always bring it in to us and we'll reinstall Windows without all that bloatware for a very fair cost. This will allow your desktop or laptop to run smoothly without all those background processes that are created with junk programs. Do you guys still need help? Well, come on down to our store. We're located at 1190 East Highway 372, across the street from Pizza Hut, and in that same plaza as Game Corner, Arcade, and Fun Center. Or just give us a call, 775-990-8833. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 3. Anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I will catch you guys on the next one. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, the National Weather Service is promising all sorts of rain and flash flooding. We're going to find out what's in store for our weather in the return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios on a Friday. Wow, we made it through the whole week. Congratulations to us. Look at this friendly Fallon. Carson City, uh, I'm going to call it Irish weather triplets. They're within a degree of each other, stuck at about 95 degrees. Tonopah, the cool spot in the state at 91, ties the honors with uh, Goldfield. Congratulations, Goldfield. You finally got in the money. Uh, Beatty, 97 degrees. Amher goes to the hot spot at 99. And Las Vegas, just about perfect at 96 degrees out in Death Valley. Still miserable, even though you're not in the 120s anymore. 111 degrees. It's significant here in the paradise of Pearl. Let's take a look. It's 90 degrees. That's our current temperature, 95 just a little bit earlier. South-southwesterly winds came and went and blew, and they're still kind of moving around here and there up to 15 miles per hour. Uh, sun rose this morning at 622, setting this evening at 659. We don't even make it to 7 o'clock before we get to see the beautiful sunset under those cloudy, stormy skies tonight. It'll be an interesting evening of star watching. And uh, as we head to our low tonight of 72 degrees, humidity up to 55%. Smells like rain. Yes, it's rain. Look over here. Rain, 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 rain. Uh, a lot of rain on Saturday. Look at that. Temperatures dropping down about 85 degrees, 41% chance of rain. We're definitely getting wet. 
Sunday, it's going to spit and holler a little bit. Monday, it's back with a vengeance for one last big rain cough on all of the desert. Uh, high of 88 degrees. And that's pretty much where the temperature sticks for the rest of the uh, week. We're going to be losing some uh, clouds cover Monday, Tuesday. Sunshiny days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to look forward to. And temperatures uh, up in the upper 80s. Winds about 10 miles per hour. It's pretty good. I'm looking forward to this next week. All right. Hope you are too. And enjoy the weekend. Uh, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. And as of uh, just a couple minutes ago, the National Weather Service uh, did an update to the flash flood warning. They said that the heavy rain has now ended and that flash flooding is no longer a threat and to please heed the road closure warnings. And of course, you can keep up to date with that on our KPVM Facebook page. Of course, also the National Weather Service. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. We'll see you back here on Monday.